Stop the FOMO. Do you have a fear of missing out on all the easy, inexpensive ways to improve your home theater experience? We're talking about better video, better audio, without spending too much money. And when I say not spending too much money, we're going to limit to either free or even maybe up to $200. But more often than not, the free suggestion may actually work just as well. And if you are going to upgrade your TV anyway, I have two suggestions that will get you more bang for the buck. But let's start with the free stuff, right? Get you warmed up. And before I forget, this video was sponsored by Manscaped, the leading men's hygiene brand. So spoil yourself this holiday. I know I've been spoiling myself with a couple of products. Let's see, we have the body wash, smells great, doesn't leave me with dry skin, and the shampoo conditioner, also love it. But for those of you who want a little bit of hardware, we got grooming equipment. I tend to be using the one for the nose a bit more often than I expected. Pain-free, this one, waterproof, works. Look at that. Now, if you wanna get a hardware plus deodorant and revitalizer, not to mention my favorite part, the boxers, get the Performance Package 4.0, all included under $100 if you use my coupon code STOPTHEFOMO, 20% off, free shipping. But for more affordable stocking stuffers under $100, I definitely like this for under $100. This is only $30, and shears, nail clippers, very well designed. That one's only $20. So spoil yourself this holiday with one of these products as a stocking stuffer, 20% off free shipping with my coupon code STOPTHEFOMO at manscaped.com. We'll start with the free stuff. How about upgrading your audio to IMAX Enhanced for free? No new equipment, no upgrades. What you have right now, I'm gonna show you how to get IMAX Enhanced without having to do anything other then listen to my suggestions. So first, let's get an understanding of what is IMAX Enhanced Audio, right? Whatever you have now, Dolby Atmos, Dolby 5.1, doesn't matter, DTS Regular. And then you have IMAX Enhanced. What does it bring to the table? So let's talk about that. The theory behind IMAX Enhanced is this. Well, in the movie theater, you have all this great bass, you have giant speakers going full range. They wanna bring that home. Ultimately, do you know what it is? <laughs> And you could do this yourself. So IMAX Enhanced for the home. What does it do? Trying to recreate that theater experience. It only does two things. Well, three, but the third one is bad. So I'll talk about the bad part later at the end. But let's start with the two things that does that people find pleasant. The first one is your surround speakers, side, rear, up it up, right? Raise those levels by maybe 20% to 30%. Raise it to taste. That's all it is. All the IMAX Enhanced does is gives you more of that surround. And if that isn't enough, the second thing it does is it raises the bass. Everything below 60 hertz, maybe below 80 hertz, raise it up. So if you have a surround system, bump up your bass by another 25%. So between bumping up the bass by 20 to 25% and then increasing your surround side and rear by another 20-25%, you magically have IMAX Enhanced without the drawback, the number three I told you about. So it does two things, right? Bumps up the bass below 80 hertz and <laughs> bumps up the surround. But number three, it completely overrides your crossover setting. That's not what you want. So ultimately, you get the effect of IMAX Enhanced without losing your crossover settings if you have an AVR or a full home theater system, but maybe it's a few years old and you don't have IMAX Enhanced and you're thinking, oh man, if only you had this new format, don't worry about it. Take the Dolby Atmos, take regular Dolby, bump up the bass, bump up the surround, boom, essentially that's IMAX Enhanced, but you don't screw up your subwoofer settings, right? So keep that in mind. All it is, more surround, more bass, you can manually do it. Don't get IMAX enhanced equipment. Do this and it sounds pretty much the same as far as I'm concerned. Okay, next up, what else can you do for free? Talking about bass, move your subwoofer to the corner. If it's one subwoofer and it's sitting right there next to your TV, you're not taking advantage of room support. 
If you put that subwoofer in a corner, magically, your bass response is going to go up. Now, if you have two subwoofers, both of them, for some reason, next to your TV, put them on opposite corners. For example, put one in the front left corner, the other one in the rear right corner, or front right, rear left, opposite corners, then you're going to have more bass, and it's likely to be more even than where you have it right now next to your TV. So if you do that, one subwoofer in a corner, or if you have two opposite corners, plus the slight bump up in bass like we talked about, and bumping up your surround, now you have the full theater effect that IMAX Enhance thinks you want. Now, some people like it. Try it out. If it sounds great, boom. You like IMAX Enhance, and now you have it free of charge, right? What suggestions do I have to help your TV look a little bit better without costing a dime? Well, let's go into the settings. Many people don't realize that if they play with these two settings, you can get some improvements to your TV. The first one is this. If your TV is, let's say, five years old or more, right? More than five years old with the lights on. If you're watching TV with the lights on and the image appears too dark, too dim, lower the gamma to 1.8 or 2.0. That's it. The reverse is also true. If you're in a slightly darker room and the image looks a little bit washed out maybe, you want more contrast, then raise the gamma to 2.3 or 2.4. Try that. Tell me if it isn't looking a little bit better. And like me, if you like natural skin tones, most TVs by default is very cool. Go to the tone and bring it to warm, max it out. If it says warm, go to warm. If it says warm one and two, go to warm two, try it out. More likely than not, in its warmest setting, it's probably closer to accurate than its default setting of either zero or even cool. Standard picture profile normally is too cool. So if you're going to movie and then max out the warmth, more likely than not, you're going to get closer to natural skin tones without having to calibrate anything. That's a quick way of trying things out. But this last suggestion applies to anyone with an early HDR TV. It means you got your TV maybe in 2016, 2017, even 2018. 4K, the early days of HDR, I strongly suggest you turn off HDR and do SDR. Why? First, back then, the TVs were definitely not bright enough. If you bought your TV for around 1,000 to 1,500, the tone mapping is off for sure and it may not even get bright enough to truly do HDR justice, SDR will end up looking better. So go into your TV settings and disable HDR. If that's not possible or you don't know how or you want to use the smart features of your Roku or your Fire Stick, here's the best part. Fire Stick HD or Roku HD, right? When I'm talking about 4K, this will automatically set your TV to SDR and Disney Plus, here's the issue. If you take Disney Plus and you bring it to SDR, guess what? You're at 1080p anyway. So if you watch mostly Disney Plus, putting in a basic Fire Stick that's only HD capable or a Roku that's only HD capable, boom, you're disabling HDR and you're in SDR. That's the issue with Disney Plus. Now, all the other content, Netflix or whatnot, you're gonna have to use a slightly better stick. So that was about $20 for around $35. And this allows you to go into the settings, disable HDR, and just do SDR. This TV now will probably look better in SDR and brighter. The reason why it will look brighter is this. Way back when, 2016, 2017, even 2018, what happens is the brightest part of your TV is here, and the darkest part is here. And if your TV doesn't get bright enough, it pulls everything down a little bit, suddenly everything's a little bit too dark. So if you find HDR to be a little bit too dark, disable the HDR via those methods we talked about, and the SDR image quality will be both brighter and more likely the contrast will look more accurate because everything is not too dark. If your only audio is from your TV, the easiest way to improve it for $200 is a soundbar that has two things a subwoofer, and additional rear surrounds. $200, what would that be? The Vizio 5.1 V-Series. Don't get this year's model, get last year's model. I've linked it here. This is it. It works well, 
It's $200, very well reviewed, and it will give you everything you need. And we know that if you bump up the bass and bump up the surround, guess what? You're an IMAX enhanced heaven. Does not matter that it doesn't have Atmos. Forget about Atmos. Unless you are installing discrete speakers overhead, you're not going to hear a difference. So all those sound bars that are saying, oh, we got Atmos, don't worry about it. This for $200 will get you so much farther than where you are now with just a TV alone. What about high quality audio? Because we know that Dolby True HD is not available if you're streaming anyway. How do you get it? Well, with a Blu-ray player and a Blu-ray disc. And if you don't have a player, I have one inexpensive recommendation. It is the Sony X700M. It's under $200, sometimes $150. I think currently it's about $180. It's got Dolby Vision and it will pass Dolby True HD. Boom, now you have high quality audio and video with Dolby Vision, and it's only $180 at worst. Most importantly, more expensive Blu-ray players, with the exception of the Panasonic UB820 for around $480, $499, $450 if it's on sale, that is the only worthy upgrade. Anything that's less expensive than the UB820 is not going to be better than the X700M by Sony. Even Sony's X800 is not better. It's more, let's say it has a heavier case. It looks better, but the image quality is pretty much the same. Go to the UB820 if you want to upgrade from that $200 budget, but I think it's fine for most people. The UB820 brings automatic Dolby or HDR10 plus recognition. On the X700M, you have to manually Turn on Dolby Vision when you have a Dolby Vision source. You are planning to replace your TV anyway. Think of it in two themes. One theme is go bigger for the same price. The second theme is focus on either better skin tones, better upscaling, or better HDR. So let's talk about these three possibilities without increasing your budget, keeping your budget the same, right? Remember, this is a free upgrade. You're planning to buy a new TV anyway. I'm not asking you to upgrade your budget, but let's say larger. If you're coming from a TV that's more than five years old, rather than getting the same size for that budget improvement, pay for a 75 inch TV. If you're going from a 55, go 75. So let's say your 55 inch TV that you have now, five years old, and you want to get a better 55 inch TV, don't. Get a larger 75 inch for two reasons. First, larger immersive, definitely, assuming your room could handle the size. So not only are you getting larger, you're getting better. Which size TV? If you're about seven feet, six, seven feet, 75 inches works. If you're eight feet or above, go 85 inches. And if you're less than six feet, yeah, 55, 65 is fine. So let's say you have a 55 inch TV and you have a certain budget. Let's say you have a thousand dollar budget, right? 55 inch, thousand dollar budget. You're thinking, wow, I can get a 55 inch TV for a thousand dollars and it's gonna look great. You know what's gonna look better for a thousand dollars? 75 inches, <laughs> yep. If your TV is five years or older, the TCL 5 series for a thousand dollars, 75 inches, that will give you cinematic pop that you didn't get at 55 inches. Five-year-old TV, the five series is going to look phenomenal at 75 inches and more likely than not an improvement over what you have. Now you're saying, wait, if it's 55 inch, I go 75. What if I have a 65 inch now? Go 85. Same thing. Going to 85 inches, you're going to get a better TV because your TV is over five years old. Today, you're going to get both size and image quality. So what are my suggestions? $1,000 TCL 5 Series, a little bit more, the X90J. Those phenomenal upgrades to 75 inches and worth the jump. And if you could find the deal, the Samsung QN84A, when it drops to 1600, this is also an amazing TV at 75 inches for around 15 or 1600 if you could find that deal. At 85 inches, really my best suggestion is the Sony X91J, 22 to 2400, depending if you catch it on sale. Obviously you could spend a lot more, but for the price, 22 to 2400, the X91J is the way to go. Going a little bit less expensive gets you the X85J or one of the Samsung TVs, 
do not compare to the x 91 j And going a bit more, we're jumping to almost $3,000 for either the QN85A or the QN90A or the X95J. All three of these above 3,000 or at 3,000. Now, 2,200 suddenly sounds like a great deal. That's why. But let's say you don't have the room, right? You want to stick with a 55 or a 65 inch TV. That's fine. Don't have to spend any more. Keep your budget, but you need to focus on one of two themes. Better skin tone, upscaling of low bit content like 480p DVDs, maybe some over the air content, better motion. So skin tone, upscaling and motion, right? Sony TVs. Stick with Sony and you will get these three improvements immediately. Whether it's the X80J, X90J, X95J, A80J, get the size you want in one of these TV models and you will get all three of those things. But you want HDR pop. That's the other theme. You want bright. You want to be amazed and dazzled. You don't care about accuracy. You just want that HDR burning retina for those action movies you love. Then look for the Hisense U7G, U8G, or the TCL R646 6 Series Google TV, or the Samsung QN90A. Four of these TVs will have the best HDR pop out there, better than the Sony's, with the exception of the X95J, which is very close to QN90A. That gives you a little bit of both worlds, right? So X95J has the HDR pop, with the color accuracy that you want, but the QN98 will do that HDR just a little bit better in the darkest scenes without blooming. That's it. What do you think? Are these inexpensive suggestions inexpensive enough for you? I mean, free IMAX enhanced audio. What do you want? What am I missing? Let me know in the comments below, or maybe you have a question that I haven't thought of. Catch our past remote live streams that we have weekly. Until next time, stop the FOMO.